Hi, this is Deboki, and today for Not My Thesis, I want to talk about bullet journaling. For those of you who are not familiar with it, bullet journaling is basically just a approach to journaling that helps you kind of combine a lot of different things that you might need to plan. I think it's gained a lot of popularity because it's basically very flexible. You can really use it in a lot of different ways, so people have really built it out to be what they want it to be. I will link to kind of the basic bullet journaling nitty gritty uh, instructions below, like the kind of original website um, from the creator. I started bullet journaling in October of last year. I talked in my grad school vet, uh, gratitudes video about how one of the things that I feel like grad school has given me um, is a lot of lessons in how to manage projects. And I think a big part of that is just learning how to keep track of your projects. And it's sometimes overwhelming because there's a ton of options out there. There's so many different software, there's so much different software, so many different books and strategies that you can apply to managing projects, to managing your life, that like it's almost overwhelming and it's very easy to go from one thing to the next. So bullet journaling is probably the thing that has stuck with me the longest of all the things that I've tried during grad school. Um, so I'm, like for a long time I was really kind of just going from app to app, um, trying different things that would help me sort of automate my schedule around the different projects I had running. Uh, so things like Wonderlist, which is a really great uh, to-do list tracker if you're looking for one that I believe is also free. I, and then I would kind of move on to other more complex things like Asana, which is a really great project manage, management software that like really lets you chart out projects, but is maybe a little bit too much for what I needed to do. Uh, but yeah, really the goal uh, that I was like, really what I was looking for with these apps, like I said, was a way to automate my project. So basically I could plot things ahead of time and just wake up each morning and my phone would tell me what I would need to do so that I could take out that like thinking of what I needed to do each day. The problem that I started having with this is that with things that are automated like that, it's actually paradoxically easier for me to lose, lose track of what you need to do because the moment you put things into the computer, the moment you put things into a computer or an app, you know, they go into the cloud and they're no longer in your brain because you're like, I registered it here, someone else knows it now, like my, my phone knows it now and I don't need to know it. So like in the process of using these softwares, to keep track of things in my life, I actually felt like I lost some kind of track of things. Um, so I learned about bullet journaling um, online just from reading somebody else's kind of planner approach. I guess before I get into my notebooks, I should talk a little, I should give a few details about bullet journaling um, just to explain some of the basic components of some of these things make sense. Um, so there's kind of a few main components to a bullet journal. There's a table of contents slash index where you keep track of every single page and what is on it. There's something like the monthly layout, which is basically a list of all the days in the month, which you can use to list out all the events that you need to keep track of that month. Uh, then there are daily entries where kind of, um, where you can list out to-dos for the day, events, and there's a number of other different types of things that you can put down. But it's kind of like your straightforward list of things to do. And then the other thing is having uh, just layouts. And this is where people especially get creative. Um, there, You can have layouts that do anything. I've used them for everything from keeping track of my exercise in a week. I use layouts to keep track of what my plans are for vlogging and reviews. The basic idea of the bullet journal is to give yourself a structure that you can, is to give yourself a kind of this minimal structure that enables you to uh, plan out things so that they're organized but with enough flexibility to cover a wide range of different things you might need a notebook for. Um, so I use it for pretty much everything. I use it to plan my days, I use it to plan out what I have um, going on in my life. I actually use it as a journal as well. I, Within my daily spreads I also journal and just put down all my thoughts. I use it to keep track of expenses when I'm being good about it. I use it to keep track of things that I need to do in my month, um, books that I want to buy, TV shows that I've watched. I've used it for all sorts of things and so it's just really powerful because it's so simple but so flexible and I especially just love the fact that it's written because when I write, unlike when you put things into your phone, when you write I feel like it reinforces things in your head a little bit better. And there are a lot of really great places to learn about bullet journaling from. I think uh, blur journaling I think has kind of taken off in a lot of like very crafty circles so 
There are plenty of Pinterest boards that are just basically filled with pictures of beautiful bullet journal layouts. Or there's a subreddit that I kind of used when I was initially starting. Uh, yeah, I think there's like plenty of Instagram accounts that are centered around bullet journaling. So it's kind of weird because I'm so flexible, but it so it seems very like it should be very easy to get into, but sometimes when you see these beautiful, beautiful bullet journal layouts that people do, people get very artistic and very creative with them. It, it can be a little bit intimidating if you're coming into this completely new and that's not something you're super comfortable with. So I thought I would kind of go through my bullet journaling experiments, I guess, um, kind of starting from the beginning. I'm not gonna go through every single bullet journal page that I've done because nobody wants that but basically to kind of talk about how I got into to show kind of how I got into it and how my bullet journal has evolved over time and how I'm still sort of evolving it. Um, so first, uh, just to start with basically my tools. Um, so I am now on my fifth journal, but I've only actually filled up two of these. Um, so these are, this is the oldest and this is my current one. This is moving along in time. So this is a notebook I used when I was at, like starting out from the absolute beginning. This is a really awesome notebook that my husband got me for, I think my birthday last year. Um, it has like all these comic book heroines that someone like made this awesome print of and made a handbound um, notebook of. Um, so the pages are blank. Um, so there's no lines or grid. Um, but because I was just getting into bullet journaling, I was like, I, I'm just going to grab this notebook I have in hand and see kind of what I can do. One of the things, though, that became apparent is that this notebook is not meant to be used uh, strenuously. And I was having some issues with, like, the binding coming undone. Um, and the lack of lines was kind of hard for me. So after that, I bought the Baron Fig Confidant Notebook. This is a dot grid notebook. Um, I did not finish this one. Um, th the size of this is really nice, but it's like kind of a non-standard size, I think. It's like a, it's a hardcover bound one. Um, Baron Fig has a few notebooks that they make. They're pretty good quality. Um, I like this notebook a lot. Actually, I remember why I stopped using it. The reason why is because I went to Hong Kong and I went to the Muji store. And Muji is this really great stationery store that has beautiful notebooks. And I bought this notebook while I was there, even though I was in the middle of the Baron Fig. And I was just like, well, I have this one. This is a 2016 notebook where um, there's like a monthly calendar, a layout, and then a bunch of grid pages. Um, and I was just so excited to use this that I was like, screw the Baron Fig, I'm gonna just go, go Muji. And I probably would have continued using this, except that I don't have a Muji store near me, so I don't have this easily accessible. I haven't really found it online. I don't know why it's so hard to order these. So the next mo notebook I moved on to is actually a notebook I had seen in Hong Kong, and I was thinking about buying it. And I really regretted not buying it, but luckily found it on Amazon. And this is the Stol Stology uh, 365 Editor Notebook. This is the A5 size. Um, and just it's just a really nice notebook. Um, it's the one I'm actually still using this now. Um, so this is the first one that I got through. It's really, really big. It has 365 um, pages, but because the pages are really thin, it's actually not that thick of a notebook. Um, and the pages are really nice and smooth. I use my fountain pen on them with no issues. The grid is very faint. Um, so the only downside I have with this notebook is that in low light, it's really hard to see the lines. The faint grid is also nice because it's not very distracting. So when you write on it, you can use that grid and then, you know, it won't like blind you like the it, it won't be as prominent um, like the Muji grid is much more prominent compared to the Stalogy one I am still this is my current notebook so it is the Stalogy notebook I have it in this Kokio uh, cover that I also bought in Hong Kong uh, apparently everything I have right now is from Hong Kong I use a Pilot Prera fountain pen um, in my notebook I really like this cover it's really nice um, because I take this notebook everywhere so not having a cover is kind of like is potentially disastrous for me. I really like this notebook, and I will probably continue to buy it. I've con I've debated buying other notebooks. Um, I debated buying the Hobonichi, the Teco Cousin, which is this really gorgeous planner that has these beautiful layouts, and I was so tempted. Um, the reason why I didn't is because it. I like the flexibility of having just blank pages and having a notebook where almost every single, where the days are, like the pages are all assigned to either a layout or two daily pages. I just didn't think it was gonna work for me. 
The only downside for me of the 365 notebook compared to say like the Muji, um, this one has a lot fewer pages. This is maybe like 100 pages, uh, like I think this is like 100 something-ish pages. This is 365. And at first I thought I was gonna really like having the 365, but I've realized that, especially for some of my layouts, if you can track things like, I don't know, books that I wanna read, um, it's easier for me to do that in notebooks that are smaller because the pages are so much easier to access. So with that, now that I've kind of given you the exterior of my notebooks, I'm gonna go through and show you some of my layouts um, that I've done over, and some of the different ways that I've used my bullet journal and kind of show how it's evolved over time. Um, one of the things that's great because it is so flexible is I feel like I've been able to have a very experimental approach with bullet journaling. So I kind of just take it a week at a time, um, sometimes a month at a time and just try different things out. Sometimes things stick, sometimes they don't. And there's definitely been kind of some distinct trends over the course of my bullet journaling. I think I've become increasingly minimalist. I used to start out doing the more not intricate because I'm not that artistic, but like more involved layouts. Um, I would also do things with more color and stuff. And now I really kind of only do that in spare cases and I don't do that quite as often or I don't make them as integral to the bullet journal thing. <laughs> I think uh, some things I've stopped doing, but it's not because they weren't good. I've just gotten lazy, so I need to find ways to implement them again. Um, but some things I'm also kind of building up and seeing how they work for me. So I'll start from the beginning and move on to my current journal. This was my very first notebook again. Um, you can see the artwork probably a little bit better now, and it's so awesome. I wish this notebook, I want this print like on other notebooks. Um, so like when I started using this notebook, it was actually just like a log for planning um, or keeping track of my workouts. I just decided I was going to use it as an experiment for bullet journaling. So this was my very first monthly spread. Uh, this was in October um, and I had kind of like a to-do list. This is super plain. I did try to like be better about doing things like keeping track of movies I watched. So like this was when I watched Crimson Peak and I wanted to keep track of my thoughts on it. Um, over here, this is an example of when I was um, using this to as a daily log. So I guess I wasn't quite using it at a journal as a journal yet. Um, one of the things you can see is I had like plans for the day here, and I had logs here. These colors were supposed to be tags, but I would all I would also use things for use this for like things like uh, different projects or groups. So this was like I was leading a book club on modern romance by Aziz Ansari. So I was listing out potential questions to, to ask. And then this is where I started trying to do some of the more artsy things that I saw people doing online. So I was just practicing different ways to write things, I guess. Um, and you can see it, those other play layouts were much more plain. Here we have, um, those other layouts were much more plain. Here we have uh, the more colorful workout log. Um, my daily logs are also more colorful as well. One of the things you can see, this is something that I implement later. This is um, the Pomodoro counter. So this is just a productivity approach where you work for 25 minutes, take five minute breaks. And when I have trouble focusing, I like to use this approach. So one of the things I've used my bullet journal for is just to keep track of my Pomodoro count for the day. So up next, this is the Baron Fig Confidant. Um, I nodded. Um, one of the things that comes up in their reviews a lot is that the end of their uh, bookmark easily phrased, so I nodded it, but I really like the look of the notebook. I like the gray and the yellow. November layout is already so much prettier than that October one. Um, and then this is an example of my book wish list at the time. Uh, some of these books I've read, some of them I still have not. I think I got water on this at some point. Um, a list of TV shows that I want to watch. So this is where I started actually journaling and uh, doing my daily logs at the same time. So I'm not going to show the full journal entry, but basically what I do is I have um, my list um, in one part and I write my journal entry around it. So this is my habit tracker. Um, pretty straightforward, just have tasks, have days of the month, and put check marks for when I actually do things. You can tell that some were a little bit easier for me to do than others. I journaled every day. I meditated one day out of the whole month. So good job, me. I forgot how pretty these colors were together. Um, but yeah, these are what my workout logs look like when I was being 
much prettier about it. This is the evolution of the titles. This is the block letters with cursive on top. So this is where I started getting into the more simple layout that I actually use now. One of the things that bullet journal journaling has been great for is packing. Um, because my husband lives in another state, I travel quite a bit. And also with all the weddings I had this past year, I had to travel a lot. So having these to pack has been really good. And because I often pack the same things, it's really easy for me to go back and just look at what I did last time. After this is the Muji notebook that I use. It blends in pretty well with my desk. You can see the 2016 label. This actually came in a plastic cover and I bought that Kokio cover for this notebook. I bought this notebook because it had the calendar in it and I really liked that. Um, I like having calendars in there already because I, I preferred this kind of layout to the standard bullet journal um, listing of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Muji notebooks are also great. The paper is really, really nice. Um, and this is what my index. So this is kind of where I started getting really into weekly layouts where basically each week I would keep track of things. So I would have my workouts, uh, this things consumed. This was like books or podcasts that I watched or that I was like either reading or listening to. I think also TV shows. I would list them all out here and then I had a food log. I also used to have a skincare log. Um, this was when I was experimenting with a lot of different products and, you know, um, and I just wanted to keep track of what I had used and uh, what I used in the morning versus the evening and all of that stuff. One of the things that I started doing with this notebook is I started tagging different things. So I would tag um, just along the sides of the notebook um, if they were a daily log, a collection, um, if they were writing for like personal or other things, um, weekly logs and monthly spreads. And I actually later color coded this so you can kind of see this on the side here. On the side here, there's like some different colors um, that I later started using and I would color it both on the tab and I would use a highlighter to indicate it in the title of the entry. And it was just a good way to be able to kind of quickly see um, what was on a given page. And this is another notebook that blends in with my desk. I should have done this somewhere else. Um, but yeah, this is the Stalogy notebook. Um, a lot of the things here are really similar. Because this didn't come with its own calendar, I bought these stickers that were meant to go on each page um, to be my monthly calendars. So this is what the pages look like from a distance. And like I said, I've got my kind of my daily to do's and everything here um, and different events that I need to remember about. And then I have my journal entries over here. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's anything particularly exciting about this notebook to point out. I did start doing tags like I did in the previous notebook. And then by the end, I just got bored of it and didn't do it anymore. Um, I have a lot more colors in here because I this is where I started using my fountain pen regularly and I had a lot of different colored inks and so yeah it's just a much more colorful notebook without having to get super complicated. Probably can't see it um, but there are actually numbers along the side here and these correspond to hours of the day so I experimented with using this as a way to schedule things but I didn't end up really liking it. Um, again I, li I don't like having myself restricted to certain pages for days of the week. So this is actually um, an example of how I've used this bullet journal for my vlog and this was in not my thesis episode that I did about diversity in STEM. So yeah, I just use it to outline all my thoughts, really just kind of throw a bunch of words on a page. You can see it a lot of words, which I think it probably shows in the video as well. Yeah, <laughs> those words continue on to the next page. So I definitely had a lot of shit to say. And then on to the current notebook. So this is, again, another Stalogy notebook. Um, most of the stuff that uh, you'll see in the other one is similar here, but there are just a few layouts that I wanted to show that are kind of relevant. This is actually how I have been using this to plan out my vlogs for the month, um, or just plan out my channel for the month. Um, so basically up here what I have are things that I know that I want to talk about at some point. So these are usually books that I've read, like I'm reading Ronnie Patel in full effect, so I know I'm going to want to review at some point. I have another batch of uh, romance novels to talk about. Um, and then down here I basically do that full list of days of the um, month. And I also like to keep track of the days of the week because I usually try to sort of post on a regular schedule. Um, so then I just keep track of what I am planning to do for that day, what kind of category of post that is. And then over here um, is different thing, different stat stages of the vlog. Um, so like planning it, recording it, editing it, all the way to publishing it. 
For example, this is actually what my November plan looked like for last month. Um, so you can see, even if it's not finished, I definitely finished these. I actually did post these. Um, so it just helps me keep track of what my plans are and really make sure that I have enough video plans or in some cases uh, figure out if I have a glut of videos planned, how to space them apart from each other. The other thing that I'm doing is working with getting monthly layouts because I do miss that about the Muji uh, notebook. This was the one I did for November, but I don't really like it. I don't like this kind of huge grid. I'm a lot more into my December. I'm bringing back color. I'm bringing back highlighters, but just for for, for funsies. Um, I don't know why, just having some blank space on the side just makes it look better to me. Maybe because I also added in color. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is trying to work in weekly layouts um, for my schedule. This, so this is based on me wanting the Hobonichi Teko Cousin basically because the weekly layout is so pretty. Um, so I have all my days of the week and then using those numbers that are on the side of the notebook, um, kind of along the side of the grid. These are going to be basically my schedule so I can plan out when I need to do things. I, I did experiment with something like that in November and I liked it a lot so this is just basically different things that I had during the week. I also plan out different things that I need to do each day so it kind of lets me plan ahead. I hope that was interesting. If you have questions about how I do my bullet journal, um, let me know. I... yeah. I'm not, I'm still figuring out how to do these kinds of videos where you are not necessarily always looking at the camera. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So yeah, if you also bullet journal, if you have like favorite layouts or like have links to favorite layouts, let me know because it's always fun to experiment with new things. I think the way that I'm bullet journaling now is not necessarily the way that I might be doing it in a few months, maybe even a few days. I'm open to trying new things. I'm curious to see how long I kind of stick to this, but I really do like it. I really love that flexibility of being able to kind of use it in a lot of different ways. It's really gotten me to con uh, journal consistently because I do combine my planning with my journaling. Um, so having them all in the same place is just for me so helpful. I find it really helpful especially on days where my anxiety is really high. I just make lists of things that I'm anxious about um, that I need to take care of and it's been super calming for me and it really helps me plan out what I need to do to kind of get past whatever it is that is freaking me out. I find it a great tool and um, yeah, I, I highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in you know, anything that's kind of more hands-on planning as opposed to just letting, letting the cloud do it for you. And yeah, bye!